Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and in today's video, we're gonna get stuck into installing some composite inner fender guards. Let's get started. Now, if you've been wheeling for a little while, in pretty much any new type of four-wheel drive, you've got even the older ones, this, this is stuff here, which is just like a rubber little curtain, if you will, that kind of protects your engine bay, kinda. We'll rip this off in a second so I can give you a, a proper look in there. And I've been under the guard a little bit of late, installing uh, new suspension, all that sort of stuff. You can check out the videos on the channel. But what I've noticed is, even after 12 months, they're looking a little bit ordinary. But never fear, Mungie is here and they've come up with these inner fender guards. And this is a composite material. It's the HPDE type stuff. It's CNC machine. They got in there with a laser of all things and sort of mapped out the area. They don't just do the D-Max. Of course, we're installing it in the D-Max build, but they do a whole bunch of other vehicles, that sort of stuff. So I saw these and thought that is a no brainer. Today, we're gonna to be installing those. So let's get started. So step one is of course, to jack up your car. Right, so here we go. You can see what I'm talking about a little bit clearer now. We've got our little rubber curtain here designed to keep all the schmutz out of the engines. But as you can see, after even only 12 months, it's already getting quite loose. And I reckon after a few more trips, it's probably gonna start ripping out from some of these guards. So that's the best thing about our composite replacement. So let's get cracking. We need to rip this one out. Just grab your trim tool and pull each of these little studs out. There's only a handful of these. This is a nice and easy job. We wanna remove this so we can start prepping for putting our nice composite replacements in. If you have any sticky ones, just give it a, give it a pull. The old rubber curtain, this little sucker is no more, not required. So that can go in the bin. For us, we're gonna be using the Rivnuts. So there's a couple of different ways you can go. For us, I love the old Rivnuts. So we're gonna be using those from Mungie. There is a few videos on the channel on how to use these. So if you don't have a Rivnut tool, there is some DIY methods that you can do with a nut and a bolt and a screw and that kind of stuff. So check out the channel if you're not sure. But bring your inner guard over. You wanna just sit that in place there and once you've got that there it's just a matter of working out which of the holes we're going to be needing to attach our rib nuts to using our stainless bolts and rib nuts now this is what it looks like all just sitting in there so you can undo this bolt there's a factory nut that sits over there and that one there and it sits just in and as you can see we've got all the cutouts for all the factory componentry which is awesome even down to a nice little cutout for our sensor wire for our ABS etc so you can see easily now once that's in place we need to roof nut this guy here another one there there this guy over here and this one here so you can give them a bit of a mark if you need to but basically that one that one that one that one let's draw those guys out install our roof nuts and then we can bolt our new composite guard into place now when you're buzzing out your holes you will need to use a nine mil drill bit that is for the supplied rib nut so a nine mil hole is what you're after that will give you the right size for your rib nut to sit in nicely we then just want to compress those using a rib nut tool and then from there don't forget before you do jam your rib nuts in we just want to make sure you give that a bit of a, a bit of a lick of some paint just to make sure that you're protecting yourself from any future rust, etc. Jam those rib nuts home, and then we can get to bolting this guy into place. So we've got our rib nut tool, and M6 die is the sucker that we need. And we just need to put these guys into place. And there we go, it should look a little bit like that. We've got a few more to do, and then we'll move on to the next step. So there we go, we've got one, two, three, four, and five, all done, all in place. We're gonna be picking up our couple of studs here as well with the bolts over the top. So there's gonna be seven mounting points. That's gonna be plenty for this. It's not like there's gonna be a whole bunch of you know tension or anything going on with this. It's really just holding it in place. Now, our next step is to put it into place. Before you do though, it's worth peeling off our a little bit of skin that sits over the top. It's that satisfying little piece. So you pull that sucker off, see if we can do it one-handed. Yeah. There we go, look at that. So that you've got kind of the, the, the ready to go version. And then that guy, nice and matte, just needs to get put into place. We can bolt it all up. So there we go, we are all in, all in place. Next step is to grab your hardware 
have a go at those washers. They've even got some branding on there, little alloy washers, countersunk, awesome. So the next step is to sit those on top of our fender there, the inner guard, and using our stainless hardware, wouldn't expect anything less from Mungy, is to bolt it all into place using a four mil Allen. Now, as you're installing these, just definitely recommend just leaving them a little bit loose. Don't sort of go crazy town on them just yet. Just uh, make sure you've got a little bit of wiggle room there so that you can get everything all nice and lined up before you final tighten these down. Now these don't need to be maniac tight, just regular tight. And there we go, they are all in. Definitely much, much more solid, which is awesome and very well cut out, so that's awesome. Final two things is don't forget your factory nuts here, one there and one there on those two factory studs. And there we go, all installed. Have a go at it, I reckon that is absolutely awesome. It is solid as, and certainly much, much more protection than the old factory rubber curtains. It looks a little, a little sad for itself over there. And you can see they've done a fantastic job with the lineup of all the curves as well. That's done an absolute treat following all of the contours and making everything fit like a glove. From here, it's just a rinse and repeat wheel back on. Don't forget to torque those lug nuts and then we want to do the same thing on the other side. But there you have it guys, that is the install of the Munji composite inner guards. I hope you found this video helpful. As always guys, let me know in the comments what you think. As always, a massive, massive thank you to the Patreons of Video Show Me How. You're all a bunch of legends and the extra little bit of support really helps in producing videos just like this one. For more DMAX content, check out the playlist and subscribe if you haven't already. We're well into the 40s of the install videos and the build series for the truck, so check that out if you haven't already. But other than that guys, as always, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.